out of the shot. Hi, and welcome back to Broke and Bougie. We are back and we are blonde. What do we think? It looks less red when it's not wet, I promise. So today, I have a different kind of look for you. So we've done some pretty eyeshadow heavy stuff. And this morning, I realized I need a dark lip. So we're going to do an eyeshadow look to accommodate that because guess what? Blood sugar's got you, baby. So today we're gonna do a full beat. So I have my primers and you guys know I've been struggling to find a primer that will help my mascara. <laughs> that will help my foundation to stay on all day long. And you know I have dry skin that is right here and here. And I have drier skin here. But then this whole thing is an oil slick. So I have to use two different primers and you know me, I'm being bougie, but I'm trying to be broke about it because your girl's got other things she needs to buy like food, so today I'm gonna go in with my tried and true Master Prime by Face Studio Maybelline Primer. Girl, we're gonna have to buy a full size tube of this soon. We're about halfway through. And then we're going in with this new find, the Rimmel Stay Matte Primer. This has not only silicones, but it also has starches in it which really helps me stay matter longer. So I'm really into this, you guys. Okay, now that we're primed, it's time to go in with a damp beauty blender, which I have a broke buy for you, which I actually like better than beauty blender. But we'll get into that when we're on a clean sponge day because um, I have about three sponges that I rotate through just so I don't ruin them all and they can last me longer. Another broke hack. But uh, two of the ones that I have are a beauty blender because um, when my OG beauty blender ripped, I didn't want to spend $20 on another one. So I tried another one and I will let you know on a different day which one that is. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte, and um, I use the lightest shade, so if you are lighter than me, you might be out of luck. Sorry. But um, this really helps my T-zone stay, not dry, what are we, a diaper? Helps it stay matte. So I'm gonna just take some of this on the back of my hand and let's go. And when I'm doing my foundation, I like to just get the outer edge of my lip so there's a nice seamless blend between my lip color and my skin. Now I will warn you, you do have to be gentle with your beauty blender because this is a sem this is it's a medium coverage foundation. So it doesn't quite get everything away that you might like. As Jeffrey says, it's not going to cover up your anxiety, but it will get the job done. See all these little stamp marks on my cheek right here? I don't know, can you see? Right here. So you have to be gentle going in with it to kind of get rid of all those little stamp marks because we're not trying to look like a leper, okay? We're trying to look beautiful. Another reason I don't love this sponge is because this nasolabial fold right here is so deep on me. I really can't get in there with the tip of the beauty blender. So I have to like move my nose out of the way so I can get in there and it's really irritating to me. All right, now that we have a nice foundation, I'm gonna just cover it up, set it. And today I'm using a really light fluffy brush and right now you might be going, Katie, that's got bronzer all over it, what are you doing? 
I have this beautiful broke buy that you can get from Amazon for maybe for under $10. And what this does is it's like when you use a paper towel to rub your brush off, but better. So I'm just going to take this and rub it in the center. Much better. And does it still have a little on it? Yeah. But you know what? I believe in washing my brushes but not every single time I do my makeup. I would say maybe about once a week. And what I'm doing right here is I'm just kind of hoping some of that will stick to my foundation that I have on the back of my hand. That looks better. So I'm gonna take my Rimmel Stay Matte, which is <laughs> approximately the same color as my skin. And this is in the shade Transparent. What's funny is I have a new powder that's lighter than me, which I like to use in the center of my face sometimes and under the eye. I have one that matches my skin, which I love that it's called transparent. And I have one that's a shade darker than me, which is also translucent, but it's in Cody Airspun, but that's still a shade too dark for me. So you can really kind of play around with powders and just kind of help casually define your face so you're just like, oh, what's that? This is, looks really receded, but this is very prominent, so I look like there's a lot of dimension to my face. What? And I'm really going to stamp this under the eye, because we're not trying to have creases under the eye, just for a little extra coverage. There we go, now that we're completely flat, let's go in with some eyebrows. And because I'm using a dark lipstick today, I really need those brows to kind of pop and contrast with my lip so we look even. So this nub of a pencil is probably too old to use but um honestly you know, resharpen your pencil all the time i'm not a scientist i can't say whether or not there's actually bacteria on it but you get like new pencil all the time when you sharpen it so take that for what you will um this is in the shade blackened taupe and I like this better than the reddish pencil I've been using because it is like a cool toned brown, which is what my hair, well, kind of is. This part is a cool toned brown. My brow is a cool toned brown. So I'm just going to go in and give myself some eyebrows. And I'm just following the shape of my brow. I was gonna say natural shape, but uh, my natural shape is all the way down here and it goes. So uh, I was not having that and I've reshaped my brow. There we go, hi eyebrows. I'm really into this kind of Instagram fashion week hybrid that's been going on where we like the shape to be very drag and very cut but then we like the brow to be very hairy and bushy and full and I'm just living for it. So now that we have our brows laid down I'm gonna put on my trusty soft ochre paint pot pro longwear from MAC and I'm just gonna use my finger Sometimes I like to use a brush, but you know what? Some days you gotta just take your ring finger and pat it on. Okay, now that that's ready, we're gonna take the star of the show, the Blood Sugar Jeffree Star palette, and we're gonna open her up 
and have a think about how we want to do this. I think I'm going to play over in this area where she's lighter so we can do a nice light eye that's still defined so we can still have that definition because this dark lip is going to demand there's definition on the face. So I'm just going to set her with glucose, my favorite. And I don't know if this is showing up on camera, but I do have a little dryness right here. So if the eyeshadow looks patchy, it's my skin, not the eyeshadow. And we're gonna take my other favorite cake mix, and we're gonna start with that as the transition. I'm thinking of using Ouch as the crease shade. I wish I could ask you guys what you think, but you'll let me know in the comments, I'm sure. And I have learned to take my transition way up because some people online, they have these beautiful flat eyelids and you know, mama's got these hoods. So I've learned to take it all the way up here for my transition so there's barely any eyebrow visible. So that way I have room to put the crease down here so we can see the crease color and the transition as intended. Okay, now that we're transitioned up, I'm going to wait on the crease shade just so I can see what we're dealing with and I'm gonna use Tongue Pop all the way all down my lid. So now I'm going to take my finger in with sweetener. You know what? Because these shadows, uh, his metallics in particular, I find a little difficult to pick up on the finger. I'm going to take a little pencil brush. It's also from Sonia Kashuk. And I'm just gonna work her on the center of the lid and on the inner corner of the eye for some extra definition. And by definition, I mean shine. I'm gonna run her all the way up here as well. On the way my eye is shaped, some people can do the draw your new inner corner situation, but I prefer to just follow my natural inner corner when I go down on the lower lash line. Alright, so now we kind of have this wash of peachiness, but I'm going to go in with ouch, just as we predicted. And I'm gonna take my secret weapon, this little crease. I've been using that same flat tapered brush for quite some time. Let me show you. This one. I've been using this big thing for my crease and that's crazy. You need a nice little one like this, especially with we hooded ladies. So you can get right in there and make it look airbrushed and beautiful and wonderful and if you have really stubborn colors in here like this is purple because I went into coma so I like to just sometimes color it on the inside of my palm see how it's getting that all up there now we clean and then when I do my crease I have to relax my eye so I can see where the transition is peeking out and where I need to go in with the crease shade. And I like to go in my natural crease and then blend up. There we are. There's a little crease. Hi. Wow. 
<laughs> it looks crazy when I raise my eyebrows, but if I relax, it looks nice. And I feel like I look a little crazy right now, but it'll all come together when I put the lip on. And you know, mascara makes a world of difference because right now we have this very light, peachy, beigey situation going on. It'll come together, I promise. So next up is mascara. This is my Broke By Voluminous Original L'Oreal in Carbon Black. I've been using this one for years. I will try new ones, but I always come back to L'Oreal Voluminous Original. It's very buildable and I just love it. There we are now that we're framing the eyes, it's starting to come together. Next up is face. So we're gonna go in with my Bougie Chanel bronzer. You know, I love this thing. It, it's a little luxury and it just feels so good. And it's light enough for my face. So I'm gonna go ahead and bronzer with the same brush that I used for powder. And recently I've been really focusing on the back portion of my cheekbone. I used to bring it all the way down here, but I'm kind of living for just focusing back here. And another thing I love about this bronzer is that it's very buildable. So I work in the very, very back and then I can pull it this way. So that way we get, ooh, see the difference already? Mm-hmm, hi. And there's really not a lot of kickback. So that's nice. I kind of click it more out of habit than anything else. Mm. And now we're gonna be very careful. Hold up just a little bit. And tap it on the side of my nose. Yes, I could use a smaller brush. But sometimes you have to live dangerously. And of course, hi double chin, let's get rid of you. And the way I like to judge where to contour is just by looking straight ahead and look at anything that's not shadowed. Now, my light is underneath me, so it's not gonna look quite as natural as one would hope. But when I have a light up here, this is all shadow, but it's only right here where it's in the light. Enough of this bougie talk, let's go broke with my Wet n Wild Color Icon Pearlescent Pink. Maybe one more. Risk it? Risk it. Lovely. Now let's get some highlight in here. I know my lip is going to have a moment, so we're just going to just have a kiss of highlighter. And we're going in with my favorite Nikki Tutorials collab color wheel. Highlight wheel? It doesn't say, but it's called Everglow and it looks like this. And I'm going to take right in between these two because that's the closest to my skin tone. And because the way this pan is done, I have to be a little silly about it. We're going to do one, two, three, and then go the other way. One, two, three. So it's even across the brush and doesn't have a stripe of gold and a stripe of white. Remember when I said a kiss of highlight? And you know what? This is looking very brown. So we're gonna, don't tell anybody. We're gonna take this gold right here and I'm gonna rub my finger together so I have this nice blend. See it? And I'm gonna put it on the inner corner of my eye for a little bow. Oh, 
so much better, right? And the extra is just gonna go in the center of the lid. Don't get it in your mascara. And now for the pièce de résistance. Can you tell I took four years of French and thinking cool about it? <laughs> this is from the limited edition Maybelline Puma collection from the Maybelline Puma collaboration. This is in the color Fierce. And this is my very favorite. Some people talk smack about the Superstay, but it lasts on me all day long. It, it's a little sticky, but I can eat things and then just touch it up really quick. It's a little sticky, so you probably gotta wipe it on your, take some on your finger and dab in here. But it lasts, it just lasts, and it's fairly transfer proof. So I love it. And it's only, I think $11 for this, so I'm down. And it smells like vanilla. I'm gonna dab off the excess just a little bit because this color is a little hard to work with because it's so dark, but it's doable. And then I'm gonna turn it over and just go over before it dries. I feel like Kim Possible right now. Oh, hers is her upper lip though, I think. And if you end up with a little extra on the outside, I will just take my finger and press it flat against my lip. Don't reuse your finger, don't swipe it. Just press. And here we have this beautiful plum color. And finally, to seal the deal, we're going to take my Broke By Wet n Wild Matte Finish Setting Spray. Where's the top? Somewhere. And here we are, our finished look. I'm gonna top this off with some daytime leopard. This is morning, nighttime leopard. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you and what you're going through. Makeup makes it better. <laughs>